Good morning. Love and Laughs with James Lee Stanley. This is Life's Dream number 35. Come join Corky and I.
hours behind me I got nine more to go I'm half asleep at the wheel I'm half asleep at the wheel But I'm only half a day away Boards. I'm in a one-car race While my radio is slapping Country tunes across my face I'm half asleep at the wheel I'm half asleep at the wheel But I'm only half a day away Just in case I'm your friend, I'm half asleep at the wheel. I'm half asleep at the wheel, but I'm only half a day away. But I'll try another cup No, if my baby were here with me She'd know how to keep me up I'm half asleep at the wheel I'm half asleep at the wheel But I'm only half a day away This part here. So I wrote this song with James Lee, who is our special guest. Today we did a beautiful Zoom with him the day before yesterday. And I'm going to introduce him in a bit, but to tell you about this part of the song that I wrote with him, this was his verse. These pretzel sticks and bennies. James, that's a drug reference, man. <laughs> I didn't want a drug reference in there. So um, I tried to think of a different word. These pretzel sticks and candy. No, these pretzel sticks and coffee. Well, I've already used coffee. For years and years, I'm carrying this deep, heavy guilt about ruining James's verse. Sometimes I leave it out. And I'd feel even more guilty. And then I'd put it in, say, these pretzel sticks and candy, and I'd go, oh, the songwriting gods are going to kill me. <laughs> you know? And this went on for years and years and years. And just three years ago, gosh, was it that long? Mm. Someone wrote me an email. It's a corgi. Half asleep at the wheel that you and James wrote. That, that's my favorite song. And that, I just have to tell you this, that one line in the song just blows me away every time when you say, these pretzel sticks at Denny's. <laughs> <laughs> Sticks at Denny's don't give me much relief. I got one eye on the state patrol, the other is asleep. I'm half asleep at the wheel. I'm half asleep at the wheel, but I'm only half a day away.
Beautiful, Courtney. A little bit of a different version of half asleep at the wheel. <laughs> James, what do you say? Beautiful, beautiful, dear. <clears throat> so, well, what? You know what time it is now? What time is it? It's it's not that too exciting. It's when you say the word. It's when you say the word. Story time. Time. Woo! Slowly, <laughs> I turn. <laughs> Step by step. It might be. Could it be? Story time! I can't I can't myself. I fell and I can't get up. <laughs> Let's start here. All right. I have to sit. You got to sit on the, the story time couch. What happened? I don't know. What happened? <coughs> so, our guest today is James Lee Stanley. And let me just reiterate I realized when the pandemic, or as Holly calls it, the, the damn pandic, hit, and Mother Nature sent us to our rooms that there's no such thing as an audience. You are not an audience. You are one person or a small group that we're inviting into our office here <laughs> with my piano and it's show and tell time. And we're gonna show you a video of talking to James. There's not an audience in a performer anymore. There's no longer a stage and an audience, and that imaginary wall. That's all gone. You're here right here. We're hugging you. You're hugging us. So that's how I look at these live streams. So we don't, we love, we're gonna try and improve the quality of these through technology, find better, better ways, but we don't want to make it a, a production. We just wanna make it a nice hang. So let me reiterate that. Anyway, I'm going to introduce you to James Lee, my very, very dear friend. We met in 1971 in San Francisco. He was on Wooden Nickel, subsidiary of RCA, uh, one of the first artists that was signed. And he came to see the Siegel Schwab Band, the boarding house in San Francisco. And we hit it off right away. And then he and, and we started writing songs immediately. And he invited me later to his beautiful, the coziest, most beautiful house cabin set in amongst the redwoods. Just so beautiful. It made you cry every time you saw it. And I sometimes he'd let me stay there for a week when he went on the road. And But we wrote a lot of music together there. Oh, I just love that place so much. I dream about it all the time. <laughs> so anyway, James is this amazing songwriter. I think when I met him, he was writing at least a song every day. And they all sound like hits, every one of them. And I remember a story about the, the record company said, he's writing all these songs and he says, but James, you should write a hit. <laughs> and he says, what do you mean? Well, give me an example of a hit. And he said, well, you know, Santana, you know, Black Magic Woman, you know, he should, and he said, maybe, maybe you noticed I wasn't a, you know, a nine piece band, you know, and, and uh, so he ended up writing a song called O oh, Digitalis O oh, Cortisone. Uh, and, and look, because he didn't know any, any Spanish or Latin, so he looked in the medical dictionary and just wrote all these words down and made a song. It was quite amazing. But uh, yeah, amazing songwriter, amazing human being. You're going to fall in love with him if you haven't met him. Most people, I think, on the stream will have met him. So let me introduce to you my dearest friend. Holly's my dearest friend. How many years have you known each other? Well, since 71. Wow. 71. Wow. So let me introduce you to the personality, the talent, and the beauty of my buddy James Lee Stanley.
Come on, James, where are you? Oops, I have to sign in. Our own private island. There he is. You ready, guys? James Lee. I've been, uh, I've been writing a lot of songs and, and practicing and, and working on my house. And, you know, I, I know that this pandemic is awful, but being a musician that's been home for now since March 13th, I'm loving it. What, what is, is making me do is, is reach out to people that I love and make sure they know it, you know? I mean, I've, I've always done that with you guys. I've always, I think I've always let you know how much I love you. Uh, we wrote, we've written a lot of stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And all of it good. We didn't write any bad songs. I think, uh, oh, and maybe I didn't tell you, but a while back on the radio show, uh, I played your version of, of Midnight Radio, and, and another, you know, from that, uh, used, I mean, I've got, a, 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 I think it's a compilation CD. Did you make a compilation CD? Yeah, it was from that, and, uh, and I, it just occurred to me that I'm going to play both Midnight Radios next week, one after the other, just, just to, sh you know, to demonstrate how artists reinterpret things. And, 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 yeah. I think it'll be fun. And I did. I was going to do the week. same thing, but for a different reason. That's a great idea. Uh, I was going to show them how lousy your version is. <laughs> well, right. well, I can handle it. So <laughs> let, let, let. Well, I'm James Lee Stanley. I'm Corky's only friend, and uh, and yes, it has been a trial, but you know, someone has to do it, and 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 I've chosen uh, to do it, just this once. So Corky wants a story, and uh, I don't really have any stories because everything that happened to me actually happened. You know, for instance, I refinanced my house in uh, in Santa Cruz, my beautiful home on a, on a little less than half an acre on the edge of a national forest, and uh, and I decided to make an album with it, and so I took all this money from my house and I made this recording. And then I took it to L.A. and sold it to somebody, but they forgot to give me the money. So I ended up selling the house and moving into a room in somebody's home behind a donut shop in North Hollywood. That was a humbling weekend, as I recall. And I slowly crawled back, swearing that I would never record a record in a studio again. What I would do is build a studio. And that's what I did. Build a studio, and now I've made way more CDs than uh, I can believe. My wife calls it a triumph of hope over feedback, but I, I continue to compose and record. Yeah, and, and uh, Corky and I have written tunes. Sometimes, uh, I remember when we were writing Midnight Radio, we, we were hammering out the lyrics and we, we got caught in something and it, we couldn't get any farther and something happened downstairs in your basement, I think, and you had to go downstairs and so uh, while you were gone, I sat there and went, oh, and I, and I wrote this little couplet that, that we used as one of the verses. And, and you said, wait a minute, I, you know, I walked out of the room. You know, so, so we worked some more, and, uh, and I, I don't know what happened, but you walked out of the room, and I wrote something else, and you came back, and you said, that's it. You said, get out of the room. And so I had to leave the room, and you sat down and wrote the music, remember? <laughs> You know, I'm sorry, I can't leave you alone, Stanley. You know, <laughs> I said, "Hey, man, I leave the room and you write the song." What's <laughs> going on here? <laughs> so I left the room and you wrote that melody. Yeah, fun. You know what? We, that song, uh, uh, "Look Before You Leap." We never did anything with that. That's a good tune. You know, and the button willow. We wrote a musical together, Corky and I. That that is a uh, that was pretty prescient because we we wrote it in the 70s thinking that there was going to come a time when the when the earth was so poisoned that it couldn't sustain us and uh, and here we is you know so by the way if you have a really large savings kids i recommend you spend it because you know the idea of having a whole bunch of money that you're going to use for insulation once this whole thing collapses there's just no point in it I, you know so that's what we're doing. We're going to we're going to just have fun and at some point die. That's what I recommend. 
Yes, I was the first child of, uh, of the new generation. I was born in 1946. My parents were married on, on uh, July the 30th, 1945. And nine months and six hours later, uh, I was born, April the 30th, 1946. And I was the first child in this, in, in this time. My parents lived with my great-grandparents, my grandparents, my aunts and uncles. Everybody's Italian, except my father, who was alien. And, and all these Italians in the house. And then I was born, and I was a boy, you know, the son, the first one of the generation. So for the first three years of my life, there was never a time when someone wasn't kissing me. You know, I just, that's... That, and that formed my personality. I mean, I've never gotten past, even, even to this day at 74, I walk in a room, I think, everybody wants to kiss me. You know, I just, uh, I just know it. It's, it's, it's ingrained in there, you know. And my grandmother, my grandmother was the kiss in this grandmother that ever lived. I mean, she was, a, you know, the stereotypically Italian. She was, you know, four feet high and four feet wide, black dress, mustache, you know, just typical Italian. But kissing, great lap, she used to hug me and hold me in her lap. And when I was a little kid, she would grab my face. She'd go, you're such a pretty boy. I love you fast. And she just twist the shit out of my face like that and smile. You're such a pretty boy, you know. And she always did that. And I remember after I, uh, after I grew up, I was hitchhiking. I hitchhiked to Pennsylvania and went to see my grandmother. I knocked on the door. At the time, I had long hair and a little beard, you know. And my grandmother came to the door, and she opened it a crack. And she looked at me, and then she opened it a crack more, and she went, Jimmy? And I said, Grandma. And she goes, why you got a dad a beard? Why you got a dad a hair? I can't see your face. Why is your face? You're such a pretty boy. I can't see your face. <laughs> Someday, cut your hair, shave your face, take a peach, say it to me. I said, okay, Grandma, but I never did, you know. I should have, but I never did. Anyhow, I was living in San Francisco, and they called me up, and they said, James, if you want to see your grandmother, you better get here to Philadelphia because she's failing. So I jumped on a plane. I flew to Philadelphia. I rented a car. I drove from the airport to a high-end clothing store, and I said, I want that three-piece suit, that shirt, that tie, those shoes. And I need this all altered in an hour, and where's a barbershop? And so while they were altering those clothes, I went to a barbershop. I had all my hair cut off. I had my beard shaved. So I just had like a little porno mustache and a razor-cut hair and a three-piece suit, a tie, you know. And I, I went to the hospital. My grandmother's in the hospital, in hospice, on her deathbed. And I remember walking in the room. She looked so tiny, you know so tiny and so helpless. And I said, Grandma, it's Jimmy. I'm here. And she opened her eyes and she said, Jimmy, Jimmy, why you got that earring? You can't make this stuff up. You know, That's, uh, that was her. That was her. Anyhow. <laughs> Sugar, mighty fine. I only use the the natural kind. Mmm, we're gonna get happy. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll feel good. We're going to get up, eh? Natural, natural sugar, sugar Make me, make me feel so good You make me feel so good That's James Lee. A little taste. Now, I know, let me just explain. We recorded James through Zoom, which does not have good quality sound. And then 
recorded it and put it on our computer and now we're using the iPhone to take a picture of that recording. So I didn't want to play the whole song without the highest quality when all you have to do is go to jamesleestanley.com, go to his website, and you could hear all these amazing songs and performances. Buy a CD, support a CD music, support the arts. Yeah, you know, all that stuff. So, so to play it in this context would, would have been sort of a waste with the quality not being so great. So you could hear all those great albums and everything online. And I just want to say, I thought it was quite interesting that James Lee had two stories that he told, extremely hysterical stories. One about his grandmother on, the, on, on, on her deathbed, and the other one about how he lost all his money in the music business. Just really hysterical <laughs> stories, James. <laughs> well, you know, the life of an artist. And but you, uh, do go to jamesleestanley.com. Buy an album. You will not be sorry. No. You will not be sorry. But doing? we'll we'll be doing some more of James uh, down the line oh. in the live streams. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I haven't done this one in a long time. We've been this is number thirty-five streaming, and I think I did this uh, like on the third one. So I'm going to do this one again. It's called Mexico, and it's a sing-along, you guys. <laughs> It's about reincarnation. Now, as you know, I don't, I don't believe in reincarnation, but I did in my last, in my last life. <laughs> I'm still looking at James's face over there on the computer. I just. He's <laughs> such a, he's such a pretty boy. Oh my god. <laughs> Thank you. 
set up the Zoom, but we're going to do a Zoom I right presume. after this, and all you have to do is go to corkymusic.com slash stream. I'm going to say that again. Corkymusic.com slash stream. And there'll be instructions on how to get on the Zoom, which we'll get to in about 10 minutes. I will read all your comments in a couple hours and answer. We'll put this up on YouTube so you can see a little better quality version of it uh, in a, about six hours. It should be up. And uh, let's see. A com oh, yeah. And then if you just go to CorkyMusic.com and you will be a prisoner of our crowdfunding project. You can read about it. You'll learn about me and about the project and about a lot of things. And what else? Okay, so we did the Zoom. We do, did we do all the business? Is there anything Support the arts and also visit corkymusic.com slash shop. Lots of really, really great CDs in there. Oh, and, yeah. and, uh, and Holly and I created a little birthday visit. card. Uh, yes, that's out. right. If you, if you know anyone that has a birthday coming up, check out the card. And we don't know exactly what to do with it. It's experimental, but, you know, you could... It'll be personalized. So our friend Peter just had a birthday, so we sent it to him. And our friend Louise saw it. She loved it. Don't say anything. <clears throat> and she sent it to... It's a surprise. ...a very famous violinist. Okay, so I think it. you'll like it. But it yeah. can be personalized for... Whoever is the birthday boy or girl. It's probably the weirdest, weirdest birthday but card. But very funny. Weirdest birthday card you've ever seen in your life. And you probably may not even understand it the first time. <laughs> no, no, it's very funny. Okay, it's very okay. understandable. Well, okay. <laughs> so we'll see you on the Zoom. I'll get back to the comments in a, in a couple hours. And thank you again. And today is what, Friday? Today is Friday, if you can believe that or Have not. Have a great weekend, uh, and we'll see you on Tuesday, and we'll also see you on the Zoom if you want to join us 
at our meet and greet, our after streaming meet and greet. So just remember, life's a dream. Life's dream. Life's dream. Life's dream. Life's dream. Life's dream.